Good afternoon, one and all. Welcome back to the second session of the third day. Today, we are having a resource person, Dr. P. Askar Ali. He is serving as the HOD in charge of Government Arts and Science College, Tanur Malapuram. He completed his MSc in Electronic Science from Cochin University of Science and Technology. He received his PhD in Microwave Electronics from Cochin University of Science and Technology. He has many research publications in international journals and conference proceedings. His research interests include microwave antenna design, signal processing, technology enhanced teaching and learning, integration of ICT in teaching, techno pedagogy tools. He is a, resi okay. he is a recipient of a prestigious award entitled Research Fellowship of Science Meritorious Students from UGC. He also received Flair International Internship at Sheffield Ham University, UK. Currently, he is the member of Board of Studies of Electronics of Calicut University. I welcome you, sir, for the session. Over to you, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. So, uh, first of all, uh, let me thank Am I audible now? Is it okay? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, you're audible. Yeah, sure. Okay, second. So, so, okay, thank you. So, first of all, let me thank uh, the principal and uh, management of uh, Amal Jodi College uh, for inviting me into this. Uh, workshop. So I hope this is the second phase of your training program. And you, you may have a session on uh, uh, the interactive application uh, process and all of you are uh, uh, doing uh, working to, for a good accreditation result. And, uh, and we also are trying to achieve a better quality in teaching and learning, right? So I'm directly going to my presentation. In this uh, session, I would like to introduce uh, some of the, uh, how we can effectively use the, this uh, information communication tool for an effective delivery of your classroom teaching and how we can uh, interact or how we can engage our students in our teaching and learning process. Okay, so let me share my presentation now. So right now I'm uh, switching off my webcam here. Okay, is it visible? It's visible, sir. <clears throat> okay, so the main uh, the topic for the discussion is uh, the ICT in engineering education and how we can effectively use uh, information communication tools for effective delivery of engineering uh, for engineering education, right? So we know that uh, we are all in the wake of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic situations, right? The entire world is uh, disrupted and there the academic world is disrupted due to this COVID-19 and almost all the physical classrooms are closed and over 1.5 billion children are out of the classroom so everyone is looking for uh, some solution for how, how effectively we can engage our students uh, uh, how effectively we can engage our students in this pandemic situation and we are all acting as well and we are searching for different tools 
and which are the tools that are good for uh, my student and which are the tools for uh, uh, good for the uh, engaging our engineering is my sound is breaking is there any issue yes sir yes sir no, please wait please wait Yes. Okay. So is it okay now? It's fine, sir. Uh, is there any lag between my voice and uh, my presentation? If it uh, is, then, okay. then uh, these I'll... are all some of the difficulties that we may actually face during our live sessions, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, now, everywhere, uh, every teacher is looking for a better tool for engaging our classroom session. And even how we can engage our students in a better way. And most of the teachers are uh, concerned about the engagement of the students in their daily activities. And we don't know how effective these type of uh, teaching and learning strategies are. And every and and another uh, thing is that. Almost all the teaching and learning activities during this uh, pandemic situations are unplanned. They are not planned. Moreover, we don't have any uh, such type of training for engaging these type of uh, online teaching or learning strategies. And uh, there is a big issue with the bandwidth also. And, but, but we, the teachers and the students, are trying together how to resolve these issues. And another thing is that the quality, how we can maintain the quality of our teaching and learning. And there are a lot of accreditation uh, agencies are working together. And they are uh, trying to establish some sort of uh, quality framework. They are maintaining some, uh, they are. Uh, uh, framing some type of a quality framework. And we are all instructed to work together for to achieve those goals. And these are the situation that we are all facing. And at this moment, uh, the Amal Jodi College is uh, conducting such type of a workshop for uh, uh, equipping the teachers to engage in a uh, quality, uh, uh, how to impart a quality education for our students. And uh, you know that engineering stream is a, uh, 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 the, the quality of the engineering may determine the future of uh, our world, tomorrow's world. Now, uh, in this uh, pandemic situation, and I, I focus on that case that that may accelerate some changes. Almost all the institutions are forced to move towards online or digital platforms to continue their education. And there are, you know that there are a lot of teachers that they are reluctant to use the online or a, a technology or a, um, using technology in the classrooms or uh, trying to adopt some of these technology tools in the classrooms. But they are also now who use such type of sir, learning your voice is platforms breaking, sir. and technology. So wait, I will check my internet package. Yes, sir. Please wait. Okay. Is everyone feels the same? So now it's all right, sir. <clears throat> so uh, now the institutions, uh, that's the case with the institutions. The institutions are forcing the teachers to move towards this online education. Now, at this moment, everything is online. Even the course accessibility is through online. The teachers are providing educational resources through online. Even the performance of both the teacher and students are measured or tracked through online. 
you know that even the attendance is taking through online mode and teachers are looking for is there any better tool to monitor the students in an effective way and how we can engage the students during these live sessions is there any tools for that and even we actually we covered uh, we have already in in these uh, 10 months uh, during this covid 19 uh, uh, period we are trying to use different tools for assessing our students progress and even sir uh, sir yes can you please make your presentation a slideshow yeah sure Thank you, Is sir. it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, and uh, another thing is that uh, we are now trying to uh, use uh, how uh, is there any tool for the collaborating with our students? And most of the teachers are maybe they use uh, uh, like the tools like whiteboard and chalk and uh, black uh, chalk and board methods. Then the teachers are looking for, is there any tools? Uh, is there any whiteboards available for engaging our students? And that is what the uh, condition that we faced during this lockdown activity, lockdown period. Is. Now, let me do a small activity. So all of you uh, may take your uh, mobile phone or whatever devices you may have. It's better if you connect it through a mobile phone, right? So please take your mobile phone and I will share one link in the chat box and you can, or if you are using mobile phone, then yes, I will share one link in the chat box. Or you can go to this website that is mendy.com and use this code 199866. If you are using a separate mobile phone, then you can use this one. Go to this website mendy.com and use a code 199866. 199866. And try to answer this question first. I will share the same in the chat box also. Okay. So I have shared one link in the chat box or you can join this activity using the website mendy.com and use this code 199866 and try to answer this question first. Let us have an interactive session, right? So when you Click on the link, then you will get a question that uh, tell me from which state you are coming from. So you can answer directly in that box. You can type the answer. So two person attended the activity. Others, please. If you feel any difficulty, please ask. Is it okay? So only three has participated. So what about others, please? Can anyone please share the link again? 
Okay. Yes, five, now six. Yeah. Yes. Seven. Uh, you can use this type of tools to check whether the students are engaging or not during these live sessions. So only 10 active members. So go to this website. If you are using mobile phone, then you can use this website, mendy.com, and use this code, 199866. And please wait for the next question also. When you have voted, then please wait for the next question. I will ask the other question also. So only 12 participants. Yes, okay. You can see the answer in the screen itself. When you are watching in the Zoom, you can see the answer. Only uh, now we have 14 participants. Now it is 15. Yes, good. 15 is there. Seventeen. Yes. Now it is eighteen. Okay, only eighteen. Nineteen, okay. We have 74 participants in this session. So out of uh, 74, only 20 is responding. So I, I again, I will paste the link here again. If any latecomers, you can just click on that link and try to participate in this activity. Now it is 75, 25, right. So uh, I used a tool known as a Mendimeter. The Mendimeter is uh, one tool that we can use for this type of activities. And we, we can check the, whether the student, uh, student activity or you can use this type of tools for brainstorming activities, right? If you want to brainstorm your students, then you can use this type of tool and you can share the link, voting link in the chat box or in your classroom as well. Then the students are trying to uh, allow the students to respond for that question. You may ask the students one question and uh, tell them to write the answers. And this type of tool that, that Mendimeter is, uh, uh, you can check whether how it is worked, working. Uh, this type of tool can be used for uh, uh, giving the presentation also to the student. We can give an interactive presentation to your students. And you can even, you can create a, a presentation slides and you can uh, uh, yeah, take some, some sort of a formative assessments during the classroom session. So this is the first question. So from which state you are coming from? There are uh, uh, participants from Andhra Pradesh and, and from Kerala, then from Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. 
Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. Yeah, now it is 38. Okay. And some of the participants, oh, yes, uh, Tutu Kuri. Okay. Now, this is the second question. Now, yes. So tell me uh, about the ICT tools you used during these lockdowns to engage with your students. This is the second question. You can answer, you can try to answer three tools. You can uh, share at least three tools that you use during this lockdown to engage with your students. Use the same link to answer the question. Now you can see there is another question that is uh, ICT tools you use during this lockdown to engage with your students. I'm sorry for the spelling of students. Okay, now two parts. Okay, yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Okay, nine. I'm counting the numbers, right? Okay, Teams model, Google Classroom, Zoom, Google Meet, WhatsApp, Digital Slate, MS Teams, WebEx, Visit. Yes. Yes. Okay, so only 13. So use the same link to participate in the activity, right? Yes. Okay, so it is uh, 18. So it, here you can see that uh, teachers are used different tools for engaging with the students. Some of them used Google Classroom and some of them used uh, Moodle based platforms. And some of them used uh, some type of uh, tablets, Wacom tab or something like those things. And uh, many conferencing tools, right? Uh, some prefer uh, Google Meet and some others prefer Zoom for engage and some others prefer the Teams for engaging with the students. And even WhatsApp can be effectively used for uh, engage with the students. Now, uh, this is what happens during this lockdown is, right? So uh, you, you can continue that. Now let me share my presentation again. So now what happens is uh, this COVID-19 uh, opens up a new world of uh, learning. Now there is a big paradigm shift uh, happened during this, uh, du during this time. That means uh, remote work is the main paradigm shift. People are trying to work in the, uh, uh, work remotely. That is why we are all, all enjoying the work from home. Uh, I don't know whether that uh, practice is good or not, right? Uh, or we are all uh, satisfied or not. That depends on the teacher itself. Now, uh, tech is the great enabler for these remote activities. Now, people are uh, going for 
the technology based learning and teaching approaches but the major concern during this uh, type of learning is the engagement of or the student engagement and again uh, if you are talking about the employees or the industries uh, or the software professionals then again there is the individual employee engagement is also a big concern for the institutions and the organizations and uh, if the engagement is less then we definitely we know that the productivity will go uh, in the lower scale so this is a big question uh, during uh, but we are all trying to uh, make a solution for uh, try to find a solution for a better solution or a better normal for this uh, after this covid 19 pandemic situation now i think uh, after this covid 19 the teaching and learning in the after 19 covid uh, 19 is that teachers need to gain some sort of skill and one important thing is that we need to create to engage the students then we need to create a visually engaging content or we need to do some active learning strategies and also we have to use some sort of collaborative tool that is very important when we are working in online then we need to in, interact with each other and we need to uh, collaborate each other and those uh, skills are required for both the teachers and also for the teachers students also. and also we need the integration of the new technology tools and how we can effectively integrate the uh, possibilities of augmented reality and virtual reality and simulations in our teaching and learning process and i think the engineering student can or the engineering teachers can take the benefit of these things for uh, the delivery of your classroom and another is we need some sort of skill for using the digital learning platforms there are a lot of digital learning platforms available today and uh, we have we must have a uh, skill for how to use and how to effectively use these tools for uh, the, our teaching and learning processes. And also, we need some skills for creating interactive content and how we can create interactive content to engage our students. So, these are the skills required for the teacher they are teaching after this COVID-19. And why I uh, talk about this after COVID-19? Because this COVID-19 forcefully uh, shifted these teachers to use the ICT tool. Otherwise, we don't use uh, whether the NAC or NBA, uh, uh, if uh, any of these accreditation uh, team insist on using this, uh, uh, you, you must use this type of ICT tools, then we don't try to use those tools. But the COVID-19 uh, forced us to move towards this technology. Why? Because our students are eagerly waiting for that transformation, right? They are all techies, we know that. Our students are more technologically advanced than uh, the teachers and so we need to transform into use of a digital technology so we need to shift our conventional teaching learning practices into a, a digital or a technology assisted teaching learning practice that is why i coined the word is known as we need a technology enhanced teaching and learning strategy so one thing I am sure that if uh, we use uh, technology effectively and appropriately, then it may enhance your teaching and learning. It may enhance the learning and teaching. There are a lot of research 
happens uh, about this uh, controversial topic, uh, whether it kills or uh, whatever it may be, then uh, uh, I, one thing, uh, the, the, it must be used, the, uh, please not that word, you must use the technology appropriately wherever it requires. Don't use the PowerPoint presentation every time. You must have a, a mixed or a mixed or a blended uh, learning of uh, teaching and learning approaches. Now, when you transform into a digital technology, it is not an easy task. It requires you need to acquire some skills for uh, overcome these barriers. There are factors which may uh, encourage you to move forward. There are other factors which may uh, pull you back. Now, uh, if you if if we can effectively overcome this barrier, then uh, the future is yours, and that is why we use a technology-enhanced teaching and learning strategy. So, for an engineering uh, teacher, you must try to adopt the benefits of the technology in your teaching and learning. How you can use technology for conceptualizing your, the knowledge part. I'm, I'm not mentioning about, you need to replace the conventional teaching by the technology assisted teaching. No, you need to blend or you need to mix the technology wherever it requires. You can use the technology for conceptualizing the fact. And if you want, you can use the technology for assessment. Uh, I don't recommend the technology for assessing uh, for the summative assessment, but you can try to use the technology for the formative assessment. It may enhance the learning level of your student. You can conduct more uh, formative as more of the, there are a lot of tools available. And I will try to uh, explain uh, or demonstrate some of those tools and how we can effectively use those type of assessment tools to uh, assess the knowledge of the student. And uh, anyway, you can use the technology for the presentation and you can use the uh, technology for the communication or communicate with the students. And we can use the technology for the collaboration, right? Uh, how we can effectively collaborate in it with the students or the peer collaboration. And again, the technology for different purposes and also for the managing all the teaching and learning activities, how we can use the technology for uh, managing all the teaching and learning processes. Now, another benefit of using the technology is that it helps you to track the student progress. We can have a tools for keeping track of your students' achievement. And if any one of you use a learning management systems like tools, then you can have a, a better track of the students' progress. Now, again, another thing is if you use a technology in your classrooms or it, to engage the student, the student engagement ratio may increase. And another thing is it makes a collaboration more effective. We can make, there are a lot of online tools and app uh, applications available and to engage the students in a project. And there are tools for virtual engagement. And again, uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, advantage of this type of technology is that it makes the information accessible anywhere, every, uh, anywhere, anytime, uh, everywhere. That is possible with the use of the technology. And that is why 
I recommend you to integrate an ICT or the technology in our daily teaching and learning activities. It's not, all, not for this pandemic situation, but after the pandemic situation also, you have to make use of the effective or the benefits of this type of uh, technology. And we are all teaching the 21st century students. And there are a lot of studies uh, about these 21st century students. Now, I know that now you are all engaging with the 21st century students. You know the problems with your students. They are all different. They are all different and with a different attention span. We cannot engage these students in a one, one hour lecture hour. And they have a higher IQ test scores. And their tendencies, they are more active towards the socializing activities. And some of the research says that if we can teach this new brain more effectively, and more efficiently and more engagingly if you have a technology. And that is why we are trying to integrate technology in our classroom sessions or in our teaching learning practices. Now, how we can, uh, what strategy for the integrating this technology in the classroom? whether we want to replace the conventional classroom sessions by the technology or, or which one do you prefer? Now we know that we like a mixed or a blended mode of teaching learning. We will mix both together. Face-to-face -face classroom sessions has its own advantages. There are a lot of advantages for the face-to-face -face sessions. And there are also a lot of benefits for the technology enhanced learning strategies. Now we will try to blend these two together and we'll call that type of learning as blended learning approach. Now I recommend that type of learning is more beneficial than the conventional teaching learning practice for engaging these 21st century students. So now our approach is we need to change or we need to shift our gear or, uh, into a blended learning approach. We want face-to-face -face sessions, we want online learning, or we want a computer assisted learning. And we try to use technology for engaging our students. Now, what are, how we can use ICT for teaching our engineering subjects? One, it is to create a content, ICT for content creation. We can depend or rely on the ICT for creating interactive content. And another is content contribution. Let us check for any other tools for inter or a collaborative tools or a con Normally we, the teacher, share the information to the student or we provide, teachers are the providers. Now, why can we think about a uh, why can't we utilize the benefits of this technology for contributing the contents from the students? Why can't we use an assignment to contribute the contents? Let us have an assignment to the student. Try to contribute some contents to this uh, particular topic. And after that, after uh, uh, getting, uh, contributing this content, then the teacher can use this type of content for as an, another resource in future also. And again, 
the ICT can be used for summative and formative assessment. There are a lot of tools for assessment. And ICT can be used to track the progress of user or the, your student. Why can't we create a uh, continuous progress report online or a dynamic type of a grade book? And the students can easily monitor whether, uh, whether I have got the minimum or the, uh, uh, the internal assessments are uh, get the minimum internal assessment or not. And what happened when I uh, didn't submit any of these uh, future assess assignments, whether I passed the examination or not. And even we can use for the collaborative activity. We can think about whether the teacher and the student can collaborate in a document. Say, for example, if we are preparing a project documentation or a project report, then both of them work on the same document. Say, for example, if I share a Google document, then the student can work on the same document remotely. So why can we use such type of collaboration tools? And again, ICT can be used for administration and the documentation. We need, say, if, if we are going for the accreditation, we need some, some sort of documentation for our teaching and learning processes. So we need whether, I, you know, I, I don't know whether uh, you people are giving uh, assignment to a student. Is there any document for the assignment? Whether you uh, instruct on, uh, if, if you prepare or publish anything related to uh, this assignment, the, this is the deadline of this assignment. You have to submit this one. What happens if a student challenges these things in the court? There is no evidence for uh, uh, for the assignment. So we need to organize. So we need some sort of a documentation. Then we can explore whether the ICT brings those type of tools or not, and how how we can use for those type of tools for documentation. And as a teacher, we can use ICT for organizing our content. Say for example, if you are using a learning management systems like tools, then we can organize your contents or your teaching plans in an effective manner. Now let us look on the different tools that, that we can use for this type of content creations and everything, right? So if you are looking for a content creation for making uh, online content, or if you want to record your video lectures in an effective and a fast manner, you can depend on various screencasting tools. There are a lot of screencasting tools available. Then you can depend on those screencasting tools. Some of the screencasting tools are paid and some of the screencasting tools are open source. Some of them are, you can freely download from the internet itself. And when we try to uh, create contents using the screencasting tools, then again, the problem may happen. When I create a content or when I record a screen and I create a video, then the size make big issues. Then, uh, then we again try to start to searching for, uh, is there any tools which uh, allows us to create a video lectures uh, with a, a size less than 30 MB? Or if you are creating a video with uh, 15 minutes of video, then is there any tool which allows us to create uh, less than 100 MB, right? So these are all the concerns uh, that we are all facing. 
and there are also a lot of other content creation or a video lecture preparation tools are also available you know about uh, open broadcast studio open broadcast studio software allows us to create a beautiful obs studio maybe we'll call it as an obs 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 studio can you can use obs studio for creating a beautiful content you know, uh, record your screens and record and uh, mix things in a you know, in a better sense now uh, if you want a free uh, simple screen recorder then i normally use this type of screen recording but it is uh, free for only for 15 minutes of you can record 15 minutes of screen recording using the screen caster man this 15 minutes is free but if you want to record more then you need to pay for that but it's very simple and a lucid way of creating a, a video lectures by using a screen caster man then there are a lot of other collaboration tools so if you uh, one of the main benefit of this collaboration tools is that you can work together in real time so you can share the ideas you can develop a plan and you can pass uh, the data and you can organize the relevant files so maybe some of you may use this type of collaborative tools right so for example uh, one tool is that for storage collaboration we can use a storage collaboration tools one is google drive have you ever used the google drive then you can uh, uh, use the benefit of this google drive we can sit together Uh, we can i work uh, everyone can contribute the documents and upload contents to the google drive remotely into the same folder itself you can create a shared drive so why can we think about creating a shared drive with your students and upload the contents into that drive then the student can easily access those contents say for example suppose i want to share the learning resources with my students then definitely i can create a shared drive in the google drive a shared folder in the google drive and i can upload all the contents to the students students can easily download or use or upload contents into that drive folder so if you want to share uh, some learning resources like that and again we can collaborate in real time right and also you can monitor or you can watch the drive activity another thing is that you can uh, view the files which are shared with you then another uh, uh, storage collaboration tool is google photos i don't know how many of you have explored the benefits of the google photos if you have an android phone then you may have the google photos you can easily store or back up your personal photos and uh, you can free up your space in the, your mobile phone google photos give you an unlimited space but you have to make use of some settings changes otherwise it will eat up your google drive space and you can even you can create photo albums so if you are going for the nba accreditation process then why can't we simply use these type of tools if every teacher takes the photos of any program then why can't we use the Uh, the advantages of this google photos we can create a shared folder shared drive in the google photos or a shared album in the google drive or google photos then everyone can contribute photos into that act and even the students may need to be contribute 
And again, we can embed these photos and picture slides in your Google Sites also. Or if you want to publish, you can publish online through Google Sites. So that is what the collaborative tool is. Now, if you want to collaborate in documents, suppose I want to give the students to collaborate into one document. And we cannot collaborate in, in a, if you are using a Microsoft Word or some, something like those things. Then it's very difficult. Normally, now uh, in this uh, Microsoft OneNote is here now. Now, the student can easily access this type of Google Docs. We can use document collaboration. I coined the word known as a Google Office. Google has its own office package. Sir? Yes. So can you increase your volume, please? Now I am uh, speaking. <laughs> it's louder voice, right? Is there any? Yes, sir. Now it's, it's more louder. OK. So and now why can we use the Google Office? Google Office means the packages. You normally know that Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Forms. Right now, if you have the Google Docs, then we can effectively collaborate in a document. You can create documents in cloud. You can create documents in cloud. Don't, don't worry about the saving the document. It's automatically be saved. And share the files and set access levels and visibility with your students. Okay, let them uh, say, for example, if you want to uh, make a report or an, uh, based on something, then you can share one document with your students and tell the students to write into that. Or if you want to prepare a question bank, maybe ask the students to contribute some questions into that document. Then the teacher can effectively or teacher can correct the questions in real time. And also he can monitor the activities as well. And also you can edit, comment, review in real time with the documents. Okay. So in, there are a lot of other features with Google Docs. Even you can type in your, lang in your own language through voice typing. And if you want to translate the entire document into another language. And uh, another feature, newly added feature is you can compare two documents. Suppose the teacher wants to compare a document with other document. Then you can use the compare document. Now let us have a small activity with Google Office, right? So I will create one document here. And I will share that document with you. And you have to make some comments and suggestions into that document. Okay. First of all, I will give a permission to edit the document. Then you need to, uh, then you can comment and edit. Okay. So let me create one document now. So please wait. Okay, so I'll press in. Okay.
Now I have shared the link of one document in your chat box. Now you need to try to collaborate in this document. Now the document is free to edit. You can try to collaborate in your document. So type some comments about uh, the effectiveness of the ICT in teaching and learning. Or maybe you can type your name itself. I have made a lot of, oh, okay. Now everyone can use one line for each. Only two participants. Okay, now it is three. Now it is four. Let us collaborate on this document. So now it is five only. Type your name. Maybe you can type your name only. Okay. Okay, this is how we can use a Google Docs for collaboration, right? And even you can use, there are a lot of tools available in this uh, Google Docs. Here you can see, uh, there's a tool known as voice typing tool. You know, you can use voice typing facility. So here it is voice typing. If you click on the voice typing, now you just need to, talk in English. If you want to type in English, Google Docs can be used for typing. Okay. Now, if you want to change the language, you can just click on this, this button and try to select your own language. Now, you can check whether your language is available or not. In the Tamil, Karnataka, Malayalam, everything is available here. Now I choose another language. This is Malayalam. Try to use the voice typing facility in the Google Docs. Malayalatil, Samsari. Right? So, Try to check whether you can use Canada is possible. Telling is possible. Check whether your language is there or not. Tamil is there. So 12 members are here, but no one is going to type. Now, if you are using mobile phone, then there is a tricky way to use mobile phone. Now, if you are using Google Chrome, then on top of your Google Chrome, you can see one button known as 
uh, you can see a three dots on the top of your Google Docs, oh, sorry, Google Drive, sorry, in, in the Google Chrome. Then use that button, click on that button and select desktop site. Then you can use your mobile phone as a laptop, just like a desktop. one I will show So I will demonstrate how it works. So this is my uh, mobile phone, right? Now, if I want to use my Google Chrome for desktop, here you can see on the top of this Google Chrome, you can see three dots. When you click on that three dots, then here is, you can change your desktop, your mobile phone applications, uh, uh, web browser into desktop site mode. So when you click on that, then it looks like your desktop. So here it is, right? Now, you can use this type of, so if you want to switch back, then again. So if you want to use doc, docs.google.com, then you can use docs.google.com. Now the site looks like, just like a site in the desktop. So this is how you can use your mobile phone as a laptop or a desktop. So everything is possible here. Right, okay. So try to collaborate in this document. Yes, that is one tool. Now next is, so that's one activity with Google Docs. Now you can share the document with your friend and you can make any comments. Now another uh, tool is the interactive collaborative tool is uh, Google provide a lot of interactive collaborative tool. Uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, your own personal web portfolios or digital portfolios. When you are talking about the, uh, uh, the teacher profile, then you, you must have your own digital portfolios. So do you have a digital portfolios? Yes or not? Let's have a polling or not. Right? Do you have a digital portfolio? So please share your comments in the chat box. Do you have a digital portfolio or not? Yes. So we can use, yes. You can use Google Sites to create a digital portfolio. Very easily you can create a digital portfolios, right? Try to explore, uh, digital uh, Google sites to create such type of digital portfolios, right? So it's very easy to create a Google, uh, digital portfolio sites using, using these Google sites. 
what you have to do is just go to that website sites.google.com and this is one only a one tool but what you have to do is you can if you don't have any type of learning management system or site or something like those things you can effectively use google site for your classroom right say for example if you want to create a google sites and i'm going to create one classroom here so just click on sites.google.com and try to start building your own personal portfolios you can easily create this website within uh, two or three minutes you can create your own portfolios or a digital personal websites so i'm going to create one one of my sites okay this is my teaching uh say for example i'm teaching ict maybe my this is my ict teaching ict and you can give a title here right ict for teaching this is my website title now here you can add as many content as you want so for example if you want to add a text box just click on the text box you can add a text box then you can type the things here and if you want to add an image very easily you can click and upload an image here now if you want to add a youtube video here if you have a video then just click on the video youtube video place holder here and try to say for example active learning strategy maybe say check for any videos here is one video so just select the video and insert in your website so this video is available in my website here now the students can you, you need to share the your personal or your teaching website google site and the student can access all the contents and materials and question papers everything you can share in the in your personal or a teaching website every teacher must have their own course page or course website page or public page whatever you want you can share the documents and resources in that page now i am going to publish this page so click on the publish button now we can give a address here so this is my website address right uh, https sites.google.com now i just click on the publish button so it is published now my website is live now you can access this website just click on now try to access that website you oh, oh sorry i think it's not good i'll share the link again in the website so this is the website you can click on that website and access the content so it's very easy to create your personal or portfolios using google sites now again if you want to add any contents from uh, your google drive you can use this google drive icon here here click on the google drive icon and you can just select the drive or the contents or the uh, documents in your google drive and directly add those contents into your course page that's a very easiest method to create and share or publish your contents online right so try to use the facilities uh, these are all free tools available in the internet okay so if you are teaching your subject then you can if you want to share something with your students then definitely you can use these type of tools right now if you want to get more pages now here it is a pages button is here click on the pages 
and start to create new pages. Here is a new page. Now create my research page, maybe something like related to research. So here it is two pages. One it is home, and the other is research. Right? And if you want to insert again some contents related, or you, are, you need to publish your uh, research papers or those things or research articles anyway, or link for the something, you can add all these things here. Yes, uh, charts and everything is available in you. You can directly access or insert the Google Docs slides. If you want to share the slides, you can use these slides, sheets, forms, and charts are, and you can easily insert these things in your Google uh, sites. So try to use, Google Sites also. Now, another tool is whiteboard. All of you may uh, try to uh, get some whiteboard. Is there any whiteboard available or not? Maybe you may use Google Jamboard, right? Google has a Google Jamboard. But uh, I definitely feel um, it is better to use this type of board. This is whiteboard.fi. It's a product from the Finland, right? So this product is very good. And uh, I will try to uh, do some activity with this board, uh, with using this board. Say it is whiteboard. This is whiteboard. The website name is whiteboard.fi. I'm going to create one class here. This is for the ML Jodi, right? ML Jodi, ML Jodi is the classroom, right? I created one classroom for ML Jodi. Now I'm going to copy this URL. This is my URL, and I will share that URL in your chat box, right? Try to click on that chat box, uh, link on that chat box. Click on the chat box. Then here it is my board. Now I'm going to uh, draw something in this board. Now I ask you to find uh, write two numbers and do the multiplication of two numbers, right? And that's my question. Do do the multiplication of two numbers. Now, now I can see. Uh, Arul Mori has started. Sangeet Kumar, uh, Sadish Kumar has started. I can see the board here. What you are writing here or not. Hindu has started. Do write two numbers and try to demonstrate the multiplication. Use your mobile phone itself. Maybe you, if you want, you can use your mobile phone also. This is another collaborative tool. The student can co collaborate in the board and even the teacher can display the results also. Now I'm going to display the result. Uh, I here. This is three into four is equal to 12. Okay, good. Now, if I want, I can push this result into my board itself, right? That's also possible. Okay. Okay. Only two, three, three people had done the work correctly. Hindu, Arulmuri, and Muthu. Okay. So this is one sort of. Uh, uh, assessment that we can do in online. You can use uh, 
see here a lot of tools are available here here okay if you want to draw a box here you can use this box if you want to type you if you want to insert any image if you want to insert any equation here so these things are possible uh, in this board itself that is why i said it is from this is a product from the finland we know that finland the school education sector in finland is more qualitative right it is much but quality is uh, compared to other european countries the quality of education in finland is more in these schools yes three uh, no darshana you are wrong uh, you have made three into that is three plus four is seven that is wrong Okay, that is the tool that we can use for whiteboards, right? So, uh, if you are, if you want to do some collaborative activities uh, or assessment, you can use the benefits of this type of. Even the teacher and the student can have in a. in the same board or if we want we can have a same board or we can have different boards and the teacher can monitor the activities of other students right okay that's now cleared yes now try to explore the board each year check whether it is working or not with your subject or not Mutu is out of the box. We can see whether the students are live or not. Yes. So that is another tool that we can use for uh, engaging the classroom sessions. Uh, we can use uh, online whiteboards. Now we have only. uh for uh, 10 students here in this classroom only 10 students that's a classroom now yes so this is what we call it as a whiteboard and the website address is whiteboard.fi so try to use that website and whether it it, it is fit for your classroom or not so check whether it is fit for you or not now uh, actually i i uh, engage with my students through this whiteboard i give some problems related to my uh, subject say for example i give some problems related to how to uh, simplify the carnot map uh, i i'll give some expression boolean expression in the, in the board then i ask the students to solve the uh, expression using the carnot map right maybe uh, my subject uh, related to my subject and the student can uh, draw the uh, map and uh, they can uh, insert the values and then they they can easily uh, uh, derive or solve the problem effectively so i can watch and monitor all the things or even if i ask suppose i want to push all the students to clear all the students pages say for example i can clear the page here right so i have cleared now i can push all the students to the new page now i'm pushing my page here now you can see this is my page now i will give some question here now you uh, need to draw now you need to draw a beautiful picture beautiful tree draw a tree here this is my question draw a tree please try to draw a tree here yes mutu okay good and billy is again okay deepa is doing well yeah beautiful okay 
your hand eye coordination you can check whether yeah okay sadish kumar sir you have drawn a beautiful flower and if you want you can color it okay dona good now i have selected one picture here okay and i can display the same in the white in the board itself now i have copied that image of uh, diba joseph into my board now what i can do is i can uh, if you want you can see the board here now i'm do i'm going to edit the picture okay now you can You you may give some color here. Say for example, I'm going to give some color here. Okay. Now again, I can push the same into all the students, right? Now I have pushed this whiteboard to all the students. Now you can see. this board here everyone will get the uh okay now try to edit in this picture try to apply something into this picture this way we can collaborate online using these tools Dona, okay. May maybe be interpreted like that way. Yes. May again push this board as. Yes. so this is the contribution from dona right so here i can display uh the activities by the students into the live mode so this is how we can assess the works of each student in an interactive way okay arun moi good this is the work from arul moi see this work from arul moi right okay so uh try to use uh explore the features of this whiteboard dot fi uh in my search i found this is more uh effective compared to other boards that's why i recommend this type of tools uh so that is a uh, whiteboard it's another uh, collaborative uh, way of uh, teaching your subject you can use online whiteboard now next is uh, simulations so there are a lot of uh, how we can effectively use the uh, engage our students uh, uh, in our subject if you are teaching the engineering subjects then simulations will do a lot for us so simulation means nothing but it's a representation of the real world operation or an incident on a computer so we'll call it as a simulation now uh, you don't need to create any more simulations if you are not a techie then don't don't go for um, learning how to do the simulation or, or how to create a new simulation or how to create new animation there are lot of websites which provides these type of simulation apps and tools so you can directly access those tools okay so uh, if you want to uh, transact or uh, deliver the contents in an effective way then the simulations have a lot of benefit to save time and money and it will improve the accuracy and you uh, there are a lot of it will enhances the visualization student will get an 
a real world uh, or a real time uh, uh, yes uh, way of learning the things okay and also it enables a risk free environment now one tool that i can recommend for an engineering teachers is that uh if you want to know the or if you want to learn the students to the basic concepts then you can recommend or you can uh, simulations in the fet the website name is fet.colorado.edu it's a uh, initiative from the uh, colorado university so you can use fet.colorado.edu it contains number of simulations thousands of simulations are available right so for example if i click on that let let me check is there any uh say for example if you want to uh, teach the mathematical concepts it's better to use these type of uh tools so i will demonstrate one such type of simulation in the fet so the website address is fet.colorado.edu it contains number of simulations so for example suppose the number contains 806 million simulations have been delivered right you can check in your own subject whether the simulations are available or not right and also you can uh, plan for the teacher submitted lessons the teachers have submitted lot of uh, uh, questions related to those interactive simulations there are 158 interactive simulations available so teachers have submitted some assignment questions or uh, interactive activities then you can use those interactive you can this is the website where we can you can use uh, the the website is the contents you can use the contents but you need to acknowledge the website it say for example suppose if, if i want to know about the the something related to how the fourier transform works or the fourier transformation or i want to teach the students about the say for example i will search here fourier transform maybe mm. fourier and how the fourier making waves so here it is one simulation for air making waves so suppose i want to uh teach how the fourier and what are the importance of this fourier coefficients is there then i can easily mix the different coefficient and what happens to the wave so this way uh, we can teach our subject effectively with the use of the simulations that is why i recommend uh, try to use those type of simulation tools so maybe my simulation has been closed so the website address is fet.colorado.edu okay now the graphics of the system is initialized let us check how it works so while you are teaching your subject you can use these 
simulations yes here it is the wave now uh, i have started with a small wave you can uh, change the amplitude of your signal here right now i am going to mix this signal with another signal this is my signal right the sinusoidal signal is here now i am going to mix another frequency component here it is another component right and i am going to another mix another content so see here this is the sum of these signals you can see the amplitude i have changed the amplitude right now i mix another frequency component here we can you can directly set the component values here right now here another component suppose i want to make a a square wave from this okay now i'm going to make a square wave right so you know that uh, the coefficients of various different coefficients for a square wave so these are the coefficients right and we can teach our students uh, the, the, why this is overshooting is here and how we can minimize those things right if i decrease this one what happens right so this way we can use this type of simulation to teach our subject in an effective manner we can control the harmonics also here we can restrict the harmonics lot of options are available here right and lot of other measurement tools are also available you can use this measurement tools to measure the wavelength of this wave and lot of other controls and if you want to if you you can play the sound of this wave also that's also possible so that is why uh, try to use uh, this type of technology tools in your uh, daily teaching and learning activities right yes so we are talking about the simulation now next is uh, if you want any type of interaction if you want to interact with your students then another uh, way of engaging your student is to create a interactive contents through flip grid this is another tool i don't have any, any more time to uh, demonstrate this stuff how the flip grid works and if you want for to create an effective or an interactive assessment you can use utilize kahoot for creating such type of interactive assessment right try to explore those features of uh, kahoot uh, you can create uh, kahoot itself contains a question bank and you can create uh, quizzes from the question bank itself you directly search the questions in the kahoot and you can add those questions in your uh, test activity okay okay now uh, another tool is a uh, uh, google's polling now uh, if you want to demonstrate the some contents in a 3d environment you can use a google poly uh, if you are an architectural uh, a teacher you can demonstrate the architecture in in a three dimensional view i think that tool is more beneficial for an engineering student or a teacher so google poly is 
it's a new tool from google so you can type using poly.google.com and say for example uh, if i want to say for example i want to teach what this is one ground zero scheme maybe uh, i don't know the what actually it is lot of uh, say for example maybe uh, i'll check one thing that is uh, maybe i demonstrated in earlier this one respiratory system right if you want to know about there is how the respiratory system works or how it looks like for human anatomy or say so just click on one of these things now the scenes are loading okay so this is what actually we call it as the i will show it in the see see suppose we are uh, talking about the respiratory system then we can uh, visualize these scenes to the student you can uh, even you can give some uh, hints about these things here if i click here then this is what we call it as the nose mouth and sinus right these are the part of the nose and mouth and sinus so and they, this is what actually we call it as the or bronchioles or an alveoli right alveoli and lot of scenes are available you can go through the three dimensional views also you can search whether any uh, something related to uh, the three dimensional view of your subject uh, some topics related to your subject is there or not right so this way the students can get an visualizing effect of your subject you can maybe uh, if we want to go through the trachea here this is inside the trachea uh, so we can teach the students in an uh, by using this one see here this is the trachea and it contains two uh, parts one is here and uh, how the walls looks like all these things can be uh address through using these tools and this is uh what inside uh the lungs is the different parts of the lungs so we can visualize these things here so try to explore more about uh Uh, this google poly it's another tool from google right it's a new uh, tool for uh, doing this uh, augmented reality and virtual reality we creating this augmented reality and virtual reality uh, scenes and you can use or uh, if you are using mobile phone then you can use google expeditions to uh, view the, all these things google if you download and install the google expedition app then you can directly use these things now another uh, tool for making an a, your effective classroom is uh, either you can use a wacom tablet pen and a, a microsoft word note this combination makes your uh, this uh, classrooms live sessions during this pandemic sessions more effective uh, if you have this combination this you both work together very smoothly and uh, i usually use uh, this tool uh, to conduct my online classroom sessions then i can easily that's no worry about writing things on the whiteboard right and we can easily write the boards and we can try to uh, we can engage the students in the uh, in our classroom sessions as well 
So this is how the Wacom tablet and pen, and uh, you can uh, install. Uh, no, already if you are having the Microsoft Office package, then it is one note is already there. Then you can use those. Okay. So uh, that's all about the tools. Now, if you are looking for one platform to integrate all these things together, so uh, there are a lot of tools available for. Uh, the teaching and learning or ICT tools available for teaching and learning. Now, now we are uh, looking for any tool which will integrate or any platform which integrate all these tools together. And the answer is that that is what we call it as the learning management system. So learning management systems is nothing but it's a web-based digital learning platform and that can manage, plan and implement and assess all the aspects of learning. And that is why we call it as a learning management system and simply we'll call it as a LMS, okay? So most of you may heard about LMS. Uh, LMS have different roles. They, they have a the student role and instructor roles are there and you can deliver the contents, you can assess the students, you can give the assignments and you can uh, contribute the contents from the students and you can even you can progress the tracking of your students. So that is why we use learning management system. So uh, Moodle is one of the popular learning management system. Another one, it is Canvas. So both of these are uh, open source learning management system. And these two are the uh, now leading the world of the, uh, or the market of learning management system. Uh, uh, in, uh, around the Europe and uh, United States and uh, all around the world is these two are uh, now uh, leading the market, right? So that's all now. Uh, thank you all. And if you have any queries or questions or any comments related to this, then you can ask. Is it okay? Good afternoon, everybody. The resource person, Dr. Oscar Ali, take us through the world of ICT-enabled teaching and learning. He uplifted our skill of creating interactive contents. He guided us through the tools like Mentimeter, Whiteboard.fi, then the possibilities of Google Drive, then the interact uh, the simulating, simulating tool Google Poly, then finally the Wacom tablet. He gave us an insight to the blended learning, the use of right ICT technology when needed. The session become more fruitful as it's an interactive one. Thank you, sir, once again for opening up the world of ICT-enabled learning to us. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, no more questions? Uh, sir, uh, yes. uh, till now, the no questions are posted. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you.